the Mrs. Etel Oluma. All right, welcome back to your balanced eyes of Teletainment this um, wonderful Wednesday um, morning. Now we get a guest in the house. We have story go actually put you in the right direction, especially if you're not a person where they go through one sickness or the other. Now, before now, we just get a belief, say, once you get cancer, it is the end of the world. Cancer is more or less like a death sentence. But how true is this? Because this person where we get inside the house is a survivor. She come out of them and she's living large, um, life at large. They even use that experience to help put people in the right direction. She could actually tell us more concerning this from her own mouth. Good morning. Good to have you in the house. Thank you very much. Good morning. <laughs> Please, can you just introduce yourself to us? Maybe people understand and know you better. Okay, my name is... Uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning, Nigeria, in fact. My name is uh, Mrs. Etel Olomo. I'm a, I'm a chemical engineer. That's why I studied in the university, chemical engineering. But, of course, I love doing crafts. That's what I love doing. I'm the creative director of uh, Before by Bida Crafts. It's a clothing uh, line. I do clothing with... Uh, I do a lot of this, uh, Cara Fabrics clothing, accessories, sneakers, bags. Just name it, anything with Ankara Fabrics. That's what I basically do now. And that is my passion and what I love doing. So I've dropped my engineering certificate. No, you don't say you drop You're not dropping it. Because you're still mixing. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. mixing so Ankara, so mixing course, English. Yes, 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 yes. These are yes. well engineered. This is one of what you mean. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. But good to have you in the house. Thank you very story much. With us. Thanks for having me. Now tell us, first of all, uh, a lot of, now we hear the cases of breast cancer, cervical cancer, they actually, the cases, they increase for inside Wobodo, Nigeria. At what point you discover, say, you get breast cancer and how was the reception in your heart? Okay, uh, how we all started, like, uh, I woke up and had a pain in my, on my breast, my uh, left breast, and of course I was concerned and by the next day, I, my mom is a nurse. So I told her that uh, there's this sharp pain and I feel like a lump on my, uh, on my breast. She was like, okay, let's go to the hospital. I went, I checked it out, and the doctor was like, nothing to worry, that is lump, that every woman has a lump, that's okay, that I should remove it or not, depends on if I want. So I said, okay, I'll remove it. And I said, okay, come back to the for the surgery to remove it. I was an outpatient. In fact, I drove myself to the hospital. Mm -hmm. When he was doing it, I was just in. He just removed it and was like, okay. After removing that, he's going to check to, he'll take it for testing to check if it's cancerous or not. And three weeks after, he called me like, it's nothing to worry, live your life, nothing is wrong with you, it's just normal lump. And of course, I was living my life. Only a month after, I woke up one day and my breast was as big as <laughs> three of us heads. No way. Yes, yes, I just woke up, yes, I just woke up like, and that was what I saw. And, I was scared, like, how did this happen? I didn't feel any pain before I slept and just woke up to that. Of course, I called the doctor immediately and told him that, see what I said. And him too, he was in shock, like, he's not, he hasn't heard of this or seen this before. And he was like, okay, take some soap drug, make it to reduce the swelling, maybe something happened. I took that drug for some days, nothing happened, I was scared. Then I, I was in my city, but I lived in Portaco, I just located to Lagos 2016. And he asked me to come. I went to the clinic, he was like, maybe, let's see, maybe we should do a corrective surgery, maybe something was went wrong or went wrong, and the corrective surgery was just getting, we did that and nothing. They went back for second testing, nothing. From there, I left that doctor, I went to, somebody recommended another doctor for me, we went there, he said, okay, you are going to do a corrective surgery. I did like four surgeries and what? everybody was just using me to do experiments. And Every point, whatever they brought out to go and test, it wasn't showing anything like I'm normal, but I was dying. Where in these, I was on drugs. In fact, the, the highest of antibiotics, like <laughs> human beings can't even take. I was on it because like, nobody even knew what was wrong with me, but they were just okay. Since How many years ago was this place? This happened in 2010. Okay, that's like eight years ago. Yes. And where they were just giving me medication, thinking that because at a point, the breast was now bringing pores, blood, water. It was now wound every day. Like, in a day, I used like almost 20 towels in a day because the pores was just gushing out, the blood gushing out, water gushing out. I was on treatment, nothing. We were in this for more than a year. All the places they took the samples to, they weren't seeing anything. Nothing was wrong with me. 
not until after one year plus, somebody now said, a family friend, a doctor that came to her and now said, okay, since nobody, they took to Ibadan, they took to Lagos, took to all the general hospitals, and they couldn't see anything, nothing was, that's okay. Let's take this, your sample abroad. They now took it to India and America. That was when the doctors there screamed that the person that has this sample, is the person still alive, like, seriously, they said, yes, what happened? Stage four breast cancer. Not even stage one no, or stage two. four. Four. Yes. And at this point, I was already bedridden. I was bedridden by okay. this time. All right. Well, you don't tell us about the yeah. very, very, honestly speaking, very, very uh, touching story. But now, the, the, the treatment process. After all, you know, going around all the general hospitals, so many general hospitals for Nigeria, now still for Nigeria, now you didn't take the treatment or they have, you had to be flown abroad? No, no, no. It was, in fact, when one of the, the, when the samples, when the one they took to India, the India were like, okay, even if she's coming, we are not giving you guarantee. This is like 80, 20 percent because mm -hmm. what we are seeing from the sample, she can't make it, max two months. But as God will have it and God being faithful, a friend of mine that I've not seen for a very long time just came into the scene and recommended an American doctor, but he's a Nigerian, but mm. he practices in America, but he comes to Nigeria like every time to treat some people. That was how he recommended him to him, and I was flown to Abuja. That was where I took my treatment. In fact, when he saw me, he was like, ah, you're a walking corpse. Mm. Because they even like carried me in a stretcher to his place, and he was like, I can't even touch you. If I give you even Panadol, you're going to die. So for the, tre the treatment process, he started with me for like six weeks. He was just infusing me with blood. Because I was pale, I, I can't walk, I can't sit. You know, someone that is bedridden, like nothing. He's like, there's nothing in you. Like, it's only God that you're still alive. So for, the, for six weeks, when he admitted me in his uh, facility, for six weeks, I was just in blood infusion. So it was after that six weeks, then he started uh, giving me ter uh, chemotherapy treatment. I took at the end of the day, I spent a year in Abuja again for the treatment because I did a uh, nice shot of chemo because chemo is once three weeks. So did you have to cut the breast? Not really, I just did surgery. You just did surgery yes. for it. Now, in this entire process where you don't actually go through, the process of even finding out um, from abroad, not even in Nigeria, yes. say it was breast cancer and it was actually near death yes. at, at, as, at, as that, <clears throat> as at that stage. Yes. Um, I know of a very young person right now, in her young third, in her 30s, early 30s anyway, where she gets breast cancer. And she comes outside and talks, say, in the entire Lagos, it's just one place where you feel actually go for chemo. How true is this? Do we have, do, do Nigerian, do, in Nigeria now we get the right equipment and the treatment for breast cancer due to your own observation? From my observation, because then when I had it, like even when I, after my chemotherapy, the next stage I was supposed to go for radiotherapy. As I started 2010, 2012, there was no center in Nigeria that had that. My doctor was planning to take me abroad, but because cash was uh, limited and everything, so the closest place they could find the therapy machine was in Ghana. So in fact, I was in, in the queue. He already submitted my profile, my uh, documents in the Ghana hospital, the facility where I'm going to do, because after the chemotherapy, the next stage is a radiotherapy. So I was, I was already in queue because the queue is long in Ghana. So, but of course they were dating him and him being like international oncologist and everything. He had pregnant, but of course I was still in the queue. So it was when we were in the process of going to Ghana, about going to Ghana. That was when Mikio. Mikio. Mikio uh, health uh, diagnosis. That's when mm -hmm. they came on board. So he was like, okay, you don't need to go to Ghana again. Because before then, according to him, he was in talks with them to like make sure they come to Nigeria. Because as at then, there was no facility. In fact, that was what was killing a lot of people, lot of people. people in Nigeria because of most of their treatment. And they never even knew. As at, as at then, I sure see nobody go even know say this is a breast mm -hmm. sign of mm -hmm. breast cancer. Uh, and because of course, for like more than one year, nobody could see that. Not yeah. if if my sample wasn't taken abroad, like nobody even well, saw well, it was well, cancer. Well, they were just everybody was just well, giving. Uh, hey, you know, some <laughs> village people, uh, some say, ah, who know what you've done? Confess and die. You know, you know that kind of one married man not touch him. We thank, we thank God for the survival and, and everything. This, I would like to come back to that, but first of all, we know because we are running short of time, we know say you get one project where you run presently uh, that you are working on. Yes, so see, after my survival and everything, and uh, I just felt that uh, because of what I've gone through and everything, my life is, won't just come to a stop. 
I have to continue what I love doing and even do it to another level. So right now, there's this platform I have. Uh, I'm, I like business. I'm, in fact, I'm a trader. I'm a craft person. Anything you need to just interact with people, connect with people, network with people, I just love doing that, exchanging uh, ideas and everything. I just like being around, especially women. I'm mostly, OK, like the day uh, when I did uh, my Instagram, uh, Life or uh, video when I was talking because some people like when they heard me they say no 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 you know you need to just come and tell people like this is what you've gone through and when we see the energy what, with the things the kind of things you do like it's not possible that somebody that went through what you went through is doing that and uh, I started this a uh, platform of where we may you know women that have gone through things women that are in the process that that will not let their past define them women that are stigmatized women that have lost their self because because you going through this and coming out is not easy. Because people will judge you. Like in my case, we were like, I who know what she's done. That was why like cancer came. But I always tell people that cancer is not, is, not, is not because of sin or anything. Anybody can have cancer. I've seen a one year old have cancer. I've seen 90 have cancer. I've seen 10 years have cancer. So like cancer is not, in my own case, it's not even hereditary. Because in my family, in my community, I was the first. Like, Nobody even knew where it came from. So like, it's not as if they use me as a sacrifice in my community or what or something. So that platform, so women, I just gather women to come and you know, uh, showcase what they do, their craft, their brand, whatever they do to put food on the table that will make them to come out, connect with people, network with people. Last month, I was in Port Harcourt. I had over 40 vendors, women vendors, that came to just you know, showcase, sell, fun, just entertainment, and we sell our market. So this weekend, next weekend, is coming up in Lagos here. Yeah, I start the Bagada Marketplace for women to just come and showcase what they do just come and connect don't let your past define you you understand so from your past let your tomorrow be better mm -hmm. so do you intend starting anything as regards to breast cancer especially for survivors of breast cancer or people still undergoing chemo right now yes i do a lot of counseling because even when people hear my story like uh so this year if i've not spoken i've to over 10 women because some people like there's a case though uh, may she rest in peace, she died early last year because she didn't want to take chemotherapy. According to her, it was against her belief. And you know, everybody, when the people heard, they just called me like, please, be fab, you just have to come and talk to this person, tell her your story that chemotherapy is not a death sentence. In fact, it's saving life. Even if the chemotherapy kills all the cells, it still saves some, you know? So yeah, now, now God talking to her, I said, please, you just have to take him. And her own was getting bad. She has wound already. She said, no, nothing will make her take chemo. Because of her religion. Because of her religion. And she didn't believe in that. She just believes that God will heal. I said, of course, God will heal you, but you have to make an effort. Because in my own case, tomorrow my doctor says I'm a miracle because he doesn't even understand how I was able to come out of it. So uh, I spoke to her for months. I was talking to her, counseling her. At the end of the day, she took chemo. But by the time she accepted to take chemo, it was already too late. So a lot of people, even when they, they don't want to take their medication or looking for referral, who treated me or how to go about it or how did I survive, how the journey was, you know, because the, this journey, if you don't have a, a loving family or, or loving friends, if you even kill yourself, like because it's a moment that you were alone, only you know what you're going through, the pain, the trauma, everything you're going through. So you just need people around you. You need people, people to be speaking positive things around you. You need people to just make you find your confidence, but because it's not an easy journey. So yeah, I talk to a lot of women, like almost every day I receive call, like, ah, please, oh, how did you do it? How, how That's did you survive? Nice. So if they won't actually reach you, how can they reach you? Are you on social media? Yes, I'm on social media. My social media handle, though it's my business page, but of course you can still reach me there. All my numbers there. Or my social media handle is a B Fab, B E dot F A B. That's my Instagram handle. Then my Facebook handle is Bfab by Bida Craft. My telephone numbers are 080 Then if you want to come for the Bagada Marketplace, is uh, you want to come for maybe book a store, come and showcase what you have, or connect with other women, just come and share with other women. You can call this number 70 to book a store for the Bagada Market. Please, coming up next weekend, Friday to Sunday, it's a three days event. All right. Thank you Thank very you so much. much. Your, your story you. is very, very inspiring. <laughs> it is. It Thank is. you. It is. And we hope, uh, so we, we hope that other people have learned at least a thing or two. Uh, from your story, say uh, it's oh, not a death sentence. It's not a death sentence. And exactly. in fact, I'm not my scar. 
I and tell people that not, I've gone really. through it, but I'm not yeah, scared. I'm, I'm not living really. my life. I'm doing the things I love doing. I, you know, I'm just doing the things I, I just, I'm just living very life. And we should like, not forget that early detection is very important. Very, so very, if you yes, notice I mean, so. anything at just all, go, go, go and check, go and check yeah. yourself. Thank you. To enjoy more of these our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.